If n times p is greater than or equal to 5, and n times q is greater than or equal to 5, we want to estimate the probability of fewer than 5. With n is equal to 15 and p is equal to 0 0.4, by using the normal distribution as an approximation to the binomial distribution. If n times p is less than 5, or n times q is less than 5 then state that the normal approximation is not suitable. So the normal distribution is suitable for approximating the binomial probability when both n times p and n times q are greater than or equal to 5. So we want to first identify the values of n, p, and q. Well, we know that n is equal to 15 in our problem. We know that the probability is 0 0.4, and to find q, it's the complement of p, which is 1 minus 0 0.4, which is equal to 0 0.6. So now what we want to do is we want to calculate the values of n, p, and n times q. So we're going to check both of them, right? So we know that it's going to be n, is, n and p is 15 times 0 0.4. We want to see if that's greater than or equal to 5. And n times q is 15 times 0 0.6, which is greater than or equal to 5. Well, 15 times 0 0.4 is 6, and that's greater than or equal to 5. And 15 times 0 0.6 is 9, and that's also greater than or equal to 5. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the normal distribution is suitable for approximating the probability. Okay, now we want to find is the mean, which is equal to n times p, and the standard deviation, which is equal to the square root of n times p times q. So the mean is equal to n times p, which is equal to 15 times 0 0.4, which is equal to 6, which is what we found here. And then the standard deviation is equal to the square root of n times p times q. So 15 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 is 3.6. And the square root of 3.6 is equal to 1.897366. So sometimes in the textbook, they may round up to three decimal places. I like to go six to make sure that there aren't any errors of when we're finding our later information. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to draw a normal distribution that's centered about the mean, which is equal to six, since that's what our mean is. And then draw a vertical strip area centered over x equals five, since it is fewer than five, and it doesn't include five, and we shade to the left of the continuity correction. So remember here the following, right? Since we're looking at fewer than, so fewer than doesn't include the value, so it's going to be to the left of the continuity correction. So we want to keep that table available. Let's go ahead and draw our bell curve. Okay, so there's our bell curve. We know that the mean is 6. And then we know that x is going to equal 5. So we know that here is going to represent the value of 5. Okay. And so what we're looking for is we're looking for the following. We're looking for the continuity correction. So the continuity correction represents a discrete whole number x by the interval of x minus 0.5 to x plus 0 0.5. Now remember that fewer than, okay, so remember that fewer than means we do not include 5. So that means we're going to take 5 and then subtract 0 0.5 to get 4.5. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and then put in our value of 4.5. Okay, and then what we want to do is we're going to shade to the left because that's the area or the probability that we're looking for. So we're looking for the area here that's to the left of 4.5. So what we want to do now is we want to find the z-score that's corresponding to x equals 4.5 and then rounding it to four decimal places. Um, well, we're, we're rounding the, uh, the uh, z-score to, to two decimal places, but find the area to four decimal places. And recall that the mean is 6, and the standard deviation is 1.897366. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug it into our z-score. 
So we take 4.5, which is x, subtract the mean, which is 6, and divide it by 1.8973666. We get negative 0.790569, and rounding that to two decimal places for a z-score is negative 0.79. Now recall that this negative 0.79 is the z-score for 4.5. So let's go ahead and then draw the z-scale. So the z-scale would have a mean of 0. And therefore, this z-score for 4.5 is going to be negative 0.79, which is to the left of 0. Now what we want to do is find the area that's to the left of negative 0.79. So let's open up StatCrunch. We're going to go to Stat calculators and then scroll down to normal and so here we want to be able to make sure that the mean is zero the standard deviation is one make sure the area the arrow is pointing to the left because we want it to be less than or equal to negative 0 0.79 and therefore we're going to compute the probability and there is our probability and then we want to round that probability to four decimal places so if we run it to four decimal places, we're going to get 0 0.2148. So find the area to the left of that value gives us 0 0.2148, round to four decimal places. Hence, there is a 0 0.2148 that the probability is fewer than 5.